I want you all to think of a time when you accomplished and succeeded at something really great, like maybe getting a perfect score on that exam or getting that promotion at work. Now, think of how you felt in that moment and think of the events leading up to that point and what contributed to your success. We're gonna come back to this later, so I want you to keep these ideas in the back of your mind. My goal here today is to share with you the various components of success, from what really creates success to how we define this in the first place. And I hope that we can all walk away today with a reformed view of what success really means. In order to do so, I want to share some stories with you. The first is about my dad. At 25 years old, he immigrated to the United States from Syria. At that point, he came alone, knowing no one in the country, with only $500 in his back pocket and one suitcase. He didn't know anyone, he didn't speak any English, and so he really only had one chance. As a successful physician who's been working at his private practice for over 20 years. But a stranger couldn't tell that he froze in his apartment for years in order to avoid heating costs, or that he biked 12 miles one way in order to get to his ESL classes, or that he translated books word for word from Arab English into Arabic in order to pass his exams. So with this new information about his story, my dad becomes kind of the epitome of these tropes of pulling yourself up by your bootstraps or going from rags to riches. And although in this situation, my dad's hard work did eventually lead to success, this oftentimes is not the case. I wanna follow up with a story of a family friend. And for privacy, I'll call her Dr. B. Dr. B is a physician, just like, just like my dad. But contrastingly, she completed her medical training in Syria, and she stayed there to serve her community as the Syrian civil war broke out. Eventually, she was forced out of her home through violence and was later able to relocate to the United States. Despite being very diligent and working extremely hard throughout her lifetime, she was unable to pass her medical boards in America due to the same barriers that many refugees and immigrants face today. As a result, Dr. B is no longer a practicing physician, physician in America. And so from society's perspective, while they might view my dad as successful, they might perceive her as unsuccessful. But from the outside, no one would know about the tragedies that she witnessed as a physician during the Syrian civil war. No one would know that she worked tirelessly for decades, and no one would know that she saved numerous lives of innocent civilians during the war. So the tropes I mentioned earlier of pulling yourself up by your bootstraps and going from rags to riches, these tropes define success exclusively as hard work leading to economic prosperity. And the notion of a meritocracy claims that everyone, no matter their socioeconomic status, no matter their life experiences and background, everyone can live up to this idea of the American dream and achieve success and prosperity, as long as they work hard. But in reality, people often work hard and do not reach society's definitions of financial success. And there's plenty of others who might not have worked as hard and yet do get to enjoy that wealth. So my first point is this. Hard work does not always equal success, financial success or other forms. There are many other components, some completely out of our control, that determine the outcomes in our lives. The final story I wanna briefly mention is that of many of the world's millionaires and billionaires today who claim that they are self-made. And while this might be true in some cases, the majority of examples show generational wealth snowballing and spiraling to just create new future wealth. Society views these people as a success story without fully understanding the origin of that wealth. These figures that we see on TV shows and on Forbes magazine are portrayed by the media to be self-made. And yet, their success is owed to generational wealth, to increased opportunities and resources, to fame, and to family connections. I hope that through these stories, we can understand that the idealized concept of a meritocracy in the US is a fallacy. 
A meritocracy is based on the assumptions that everyone has an equal starting point and everyone has equal opportunities, but these assumptions do not hold true. So as a result, socioeconomic success cannot result solely from hard work and vice versa. So then what is the true formula for success? The age old question. In reality, we know that no true formula exists. Success is the result of a variety of factors, importantly including chance, including resources and opportunities, and sometimes hard work. When we compare the story of Dr. B with that of a famous billionaire, we can understand that their outcomes resulted from vastly unequal starting points and vastly unequal resources. And when we compare my dad's story to Dr. B's story, we can see that a series of chances, luck and opportunities, these created their different outcomes. It was due to chance that my dad immigrated to the United States 20 to 25 years before Dr. B. And it was due to chance that the Syrian civil war broke out, causing her to lose stability in her life. Both of these individuals have merit and both have worked exceptionally hard throughout their lifetimes. Yet without knowing their stories and just knowing that at this moment, my dad works as a doctor in the United States and Dr. B is not able to, society might perceive only one of them as being successful. But of course, we know this not to be true. This goes to show that what we see on the outside is only the tip of the iceberg. We have to look beneath the surface of everyone's apparent success and failures to realize that each person has a unique story and each person might define success differently. By listening to everyone's stories, we can realize that the outcomes of success in our lives are not just dependent on hard work or determination. Those of us who got lucky in the roulette of life have to recognize our privilege on all different levels. Recognition is the first step and action is the next. As I mentioned, meritocracy would only work if everyone has equal starting points, equal resources, and equal opportunities. And yet, inequities surround us every day, from classism, to discrimination, to lack of healthcare access, the list can go on and on. We must address these inequities on both a national and global level in order to provide everyone with the equal opportunity and potential to follow their own dreams and their own definitions of success. Now, let's loop back to your moment of accomplishment that I mentioned in the beginning. In that point, you probably felt really happy, really proud, as you should. But that little burst of dopamine probably didn't last too long. The feeling was probably fleeting. It was only a matter of time before you began striving for something new or you were faced with a new life challenge. So the sense of fulfillment that we feel after our accomplishment or our success is really short lived. And that's because we've been defining success wrong. Throughout this talk, I've shared stories of hardship, of so-called failure and of so-called success. But these notions that we've discussed of success and failure have been purely based on society's definitions. And society defines success based on quantity, like your net worth or your SAT score or the number of Instagram followers you might have. Why would we follow this definition? Why wouldn't Dr. B's success be based on her life experiences as a physician and the wide ranging impact she was able to have on her community throughout the Syrian civil war? Success should be based on quality, not quantity. And each person must define their own success based on what would fulfill them in the long term. And this long term fulfillment typically comes from things that are not necessarily quantifiable. What I'm trying to communicate through these stories is that success is not an end point. Success is not one size fits all and success is not visible from the outside. Your path, your decisions, your actions, these determine success, not just the outcome. Success should include all of one's hidden stories. We need to reshape our perspectives of merit and success in today's world. And redefining success should be done on an individual basis. Success can look different for each and every person. One person's measure can be based on following their dream or finding love or showing kindness to someone 
or having a chosen family or pushing through life challenges. The list can go on and on. As long as we have a strong individual purpose and passion in life, we are successful. So I want to leave you here today with three main messages. Firstly, we need to unlearn the idea that success is always and solely the result of hard work. There is so much more that influences our outcomes, from resources to chance to luck to opportunities. My second message is that each person has a unique story, and we have to look beneath their surface to hear these stories and understand their perspectives in the world. And finally, I leave you with the question of how do you want to define your own success? Once we redefine success based on our own paths and our own goals, rather than societal expectations, we can have long-term fulfillment and happiness. Thank you.